Hey everyone, Sam Mackay here from Enterprise DNA. Today we're going to go over something really cool. Have you ever seen a data set and thought, or, or looked at an element in your data and thought, well, 20% of the dimension or 20% of our customers actually make up 80% of our revenue or 20% of the products we sell make up 80% of the revenue. Sometimes this is known as the Pareto rule and has become famous over time. It's referenced in, referenced in so many different markets, so many different environments, so many different businesses, business sectors, etc. Because it's true, it actually is what happens. In most cases, most of your dimensions are gonna have, say 20% are gonna make up 80% of your sales. Could be locations, could be customers, could be products. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how you can use a pattern, if you like, inside of Power BI using formula to go and work out, to go and test this rule. Because at the end of the day, you wanna focus in on where you're generating your best returns as a business, right? So if you discover that 20% of your customers make up 80% of your revenues, then you, know, you should be spending the bulk of your time trying to extract as much insight as possible from those customers or from those products or in those locations. It might not always be the case, but in a lot of cases, you know, you generally will. So I'm gonna jump through uh, how I've set up this dashboard. Pretty simple stuff, uh, but then also i show you the formula that sits in behind here. Just as a reminder, if you want to download this uh, PBIX file, you certainly can. It just requires a small investment. Details are in the description. Okay, so if we're looking at say our, our, our states here, so what I wanted to what I wanted to look at was I wanted to say within each state I wanted to see well, how much of our total sales come from our top twenty percent of our customers, right? So if you think about what we've got to do there, first of all we've got to work out what, how many customers we have, right? So that, that we sell to in that particular region. So if we look at, say, Florida here, you can see that we sell to 792 customers. And then if we come down the bottom, you know, we've got much lower subset of customers. It's, it's a smaller market for us, etc. So what I wanted to work out was, well, what, what will my top 20% 20, 20 of customers or what were the 20% of customers um, that, uh, the top 20% of customers that we were selling to? And so first of all, I had to work out, well, what, what makes up 20% of uh, our customers, right? And so all I did was I times um, 0.2 times by the total customers. And then that gives us a number which we can then feed into some formula to work out, okay, well, in this particular region, who are the top 24? Or in this particular region, who are the top 158? I mean, I guess that uh, extracts for us that top 20%, right? Okay, so now that we, so since after I've done that, then what we need to do is we need to somehow feed that number into some ranking logic, and say within each state, what is the top, uh, these top twenty percent of customers? This this number we've extracted, how many of how many sales can be attributed to those to those customers? Now what I've done is I've actually set it up so that we could actually click through and we can actually see the customers, right? So we can actually see the total sales of our customers down. Uh, down in this chart on the right hand side. But what I want is a total number. I want to see, okay, as a, as so in Florida, we've made 9 million sales. Well, it, in the answer, you know, in terms of the top 20% is 3.5 million. But then ultimately, I want to see, well, what is that a percentage? What percent is that of our total sales? Now, in this case, you'll see that the 80 20 rule does not apply, but that's just because this data set is totally random. Um, most data sets are going to have a bit more uh, reality to them, I, I, I would guess. Okay, so let's let's dig into the actual formula. So, there's a little bit to this, but I've, I've pre set it up here. I'm not going to work, work through uh, each individual element. But the first thing we've got to do is we've got to work out dynamically. Uh, what what the total number of customers were. I've, I've obviously calculated it here, but I've done it also within this formula so that we don't have to go and reference a different measure. And so I've used variables and I've said, okay, the customer percent that we're looking for, top 20%, 0.2, easy stuff. Now, the one thing to note is that I have used distinct count within the sales table, right? Because if I went distinct count within the customer table, that's not going to dynamically filter for each different state. 
because of the way our data model is set up with our lookup tables at the top. So what I've had to do is I've had to make sure that I reference something that was in the sales table so that if a filter was placed on Florida, I would be counting the top 2%, oh, the top 20% of customers who actually bought in Florida. And then we come down to Calculate. And remember, Calculate can change the context of a calculation. And so I'm still counting up total sales, but I'm counting it up in a different context. I want to break out these top 20% of people. And that's basically what this, this uh, part of the formula does. So what we're doing is we're filtering every single customer that we've sold to in Florida, and we're working out with this rank X if that customer is, by their total sales, in the top 20% or in the top um, customer percent, which is the formula that we have here, right? And so if, and if we think about exactly what this is doing, this customer percent is working out to 158 for Florida, and it's saying, well, if that customer is ranked by their sales in the top 158, then retain that customer and count up the total sales. So that's, that's in theory, what is actually going on behind the scenes. That's practically what is, what is happening. And what's cool is that all of these numbers get done on the fly, right? And if we look down the list here, they're all getting dynamically calculated for every single state. And so that's how we get this number down here. And that's ultimately, and then to calculate the percent, all we have to do basically is go uh, top 20% of customers divided by total sales. And then that's going to give us the percent of sales for our top 20%. So that's how we test. That's how we test the Pareto rule within our data set. And just think about this for a second. You could do this on any dimension in your data set. So you could test the Pareto rule using this exact same technique. All you would have to do is change up, slightly change up the columns that are referenced in this formula based on the context that you want to calculate it in. And what's seriously cool is that we can, we can also use this formula, this percent of sales in top 20%, we can reuse it in other um, in, in, in other visualizations and use the power of the data model to work to to find extract even more insight so for example here right if i click on florida you'll see that this chart changes and it's showing me actually well how are the top 20 percent performing in each individual month it's pretty cool right we could also change this to quarter. we could actually uh, create it to quarter in here as well and change that there and see how uh, a top 20 percent are going on a quarterly basis and we've got we can see the difference between the overall um, uh, the, the overall number versus just the Florida selection we've made. And we can work our way down like so. And then what's also cool is we can actually then see, okay, well, uh, what what is making up that number? And if I select, and this is what's so awesome about this, this, this new table feature as well, is we can see, okay, well, let's, let's go and have a look at, uh, this is Virginia, I believe. So 40, so... 20% of our customers make up 46.18% of our, our total sales. And by clicking that, I can actually see the individual breakdown of these customers. And I can see, okay, well, the, it's because of these customers here. The top 125 customers, that is what is making up that number. Okay, so hopefully you've got a good idea of how this is created and how you could retest this in multiple different ways. Uh, if you want to download the uh, the reference file that we're looking at here, you can. Small investment, um, just got to check out the description. But I, all I want to reiterate here is just the reusability of this this technique. Man, you can you can you can discover uh, you can test this in so many different against okay, so many different dimensions, so many different ways. You know, an immensely powerful a, a powerful piece of analysis. Okay, hopefully you enjoyed that content. Hopefully you can reuse this in your own environments. It's a superb uh, piece of analysis that you know really showcase some some high quality insight that will you know, make people really go well if you if you set it up in a you know in a compelling way and a compelling visualization and dashboard. Don't forget to subscribe. New content every weekday from uh, Enterprise DNA TV. Signing off here. All the best. Uh, talk to you soon.